Okay, we're going to go ahead and do a virtual tour of the InkPad X Pro. Um, and basically, this is just going through the device, just seeing all the features and how it's laid out, and just the general performance as we go through. Um, we'll go more into a review in the next couple of videos, but this is really a tour. So where we are at the beginning here is on the sleep screen, and you can tell because of that icon there. So we're going to go ahead and click on the power button. Um, as a reminder, we have four buttons down below, a home button, uh, a back button, a forward button, and the power button. There are no buttons along the side. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this on. All right. And here we are. Um, so let's draw our attention to the top bar up here. We'll start there. This is obviously the home screen, so nothing uh, notable there. This is basically the open apps, this little icon right there. So if you click on this, any applications that are open are listed. You can close them one by one by clicking on the X, or you can close them all, and that frees up RAM. You've got a little back button there. Uh, you have a drop down bar, which we'll get to in just a second. Your Wi Fi indicators here, your battery indicator, uh, uh, date, and time. Let's go ahead and do that drop down bar and see what we get. Okay, so a number of toggles here. You've got your Wi Fi. You can turn it on or off here. You can take a screenshot um, of at any time doing this drop down bar. You have Bluetooth on and off. You have floating ball. So this is a standard floating ball for those that are um, used to that. And so you can see I turned it on and the ball is there. I can hold onto this and move it over as well. Oops, just snap back. Let's see. You can... All right, so it's got a little bit odd behavior. Just see if we can hold it in place. No. All right. So a little strange, but the basic idea, we'll put it over here to the right, let it settle. If you click on it, then you have a number of shortcuts that are available here. So we're gonna get to that uh, when we look at the application which drives what appears on the shortcuts. We'll see what these things are, and you can see how they can be configured. But turning the ball itself on or off, there's a shortcut for that here. We'll go ahead and we'll leave it on for now. You do have App Optimize here. So if you click on that, there's only a handful of settings. You can change the dots per inch. So if you have an app that you downloaded and, and the you know, resolution is small, the text is small, then you can kind of crank it up here. You can play with the contrast if necessary. And then there are three basic modes um, in this device. There's HD, normal, and extreme. So HD is gonna give you the best picture quality. Normal is a balance between picture quality and uh, performance, and actually probably is where you're gonna spend most of your time with this device. And then Extreme um, really sacrifices visual performance to try to get the best, um, the best performance out of the device, but I do recommend normal. So we'll kind of flip through those uh, as we go through an app to kind of see those in action. But let's go ahead and X out of here for now. Go back into the drop-down bar. Uh, we have global handwriting, so you might be familiar with this from some of the other videos that I do. You can see there's two modes here. So the first mode is basically something you'd use, for example, with Microsoft OneNote, where OneNote allows for pen input, but it's not necessarily optimized for an e-ink device. So what you can do is you can write, that writing gets translated, uh, and then converted into the writing native to that OneNote uh, app. So that's one thing. And then you can take a picture mode where no matter what you're looking at, uh, you can write it right on top of the screen and then you take a screenshot um, you know, and save that in your, in your basically your um, picture file, if you will. So that's, those are the two functions that we have with global handwriting. We'll go over that in the next video, but this is just to know that it's here in this drop-down bar. Okay, we have a, a volume indicator here. If you click on that, you, know, you can either go into silent mode or you can toggle the sound. Um, there's no speaker on this device. So that sound is entirely through any type of Bluetooth audio that, that you might have. Okay, there's auto rotate, so you can turn that off or on from here. 
you can turn on flight mode from here and then you've got your front lighting. So let's go ahead and take a look at front lighting just to see the different configurations. So we'll start and I'll put the screen here so you can see it. We start with full lighting on full warmth. So let's go ahead and scale that down all the way down. Oops, there we go. So now we're on full lighting on cold and then you know in between would be roughly like this. And you can go half, halfway on the lighting to get a dimmer uh, front lighting effect, which would save battery. Um, so that's how that works. Go ahead and turn that off. We have a little settings icon here, which we'll get into in a second. And then you can go in the power mode, which allows you either to restart or power off the device. Okay, so the tour then is going to take us in to this settings tab. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on that settings ball and see what's available. Um, so first off, you have your standards, like you, you know, connecting to your Wi-Fi network. You have Bluetooth where you can both turn it on, but also you know, pair with your devices here. We'll do a keyboard test in the next video to see how that fares. If you're having issues with your stylus, you can try recalibrating it here. The next option is display. Um, this is where you can uh, another place where you can turn on the floating ball and then you've got the settings here. Um, you can also, you can change the size of the ball. There's like, you know, three options or actually this goes up to, to six. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So there's a very large ball and then there is a very small one. So that's zero. Um, you do have, these are all the features and what they do, and these can all be customized. So if I click on one of these, these are all the options, or at least the first page of options. And you can also select none. So you can, you don't have to have, you know, an entire fan of options. You can actually reduce your number of options. There's the second page and all the options that are available. Let's go ahead, actually, just for fun, let's turn some of these on to none. And before we do that, let's see what it looks like. So you can see you get this full fan of applications, or shortcuts, rather. Let's go ahead and go none on this. We'll go none here. And none here like so. So now we've gotten rid of a third of them. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. So, can, so it still goes from one end to the other, but you can see the icons are not as nearly tightly packed now that we have a third less. If we wanted to go back to what we had, we can just click on reset. And there you go. Like so. So that's all under display. Get rid of that. I'm actually going to get rid of the floating ball at this point since we've demonstrated it. Okay. Uh, another shortcut to volume. And again, ex exact same as we saw in the drop down bar. Clicking on battery. Showing your charge. Um, you can go into automatic hibernation mode. Here's your options for that. I have it disabled. Um, and I also have power save mode off. Um, however, on this device, you're really going to want to consider toggling on these two items because this does drain battery fairly quickly. But for the purposes of the review and all the videos I'm showing, I have these off. How I do all my battery testing on devices, I turn off the power save feature so that you can get a apples to apples comparison. And we'll talk about the battery life in the next video. Okay, let's go to language. These are all the languages that are available um, on the device. So obviously very European focused. Here's your date and time. Uh, you can go 24 hour format, set date and time automatically, but you'll notice that there's no toggle for the time zone. So this is not my time zone, uh, and I'm not clear how to change that. 
uh, on-screen keyboard. Uh, by default, you have the Android keyboard, and then there's some settings for that, and it's a pretty standard uh, option. Okay, Applications Manager. You can click on all apps. Let's click on the browser just to see what's available. Okay, and this is a pretty standard Android uh, view. Let's, see, let's go back. Okay, and then there's this auto run settings that allows applications to run in the background. And currently, I've set none to run in the background. Again, that's a standard that I do for battery testing. All right, and then finally about device, which is just giving information. And here we can see it's got 32 gigabytes of storage. It has uh, two gigabytes of RAM and how much is available um, and so on. It doesn't say this here, but this is running Android 8.1 uh, and your ability to system update is here. Check for one. Oh, let's turn on Wi-Fi. Give it a second to connect. Boom, check for update. Hooray, we are, we're on the latest version and that is the number there. All right. So that is it for the settings. So it's actually a fairly simple list of options uh, relative to other devices that run Android. We're gonna go back to the home screen and now we're gonna talk about uh, items that are on the sidebar here. So the way the sidebar works is you can basically customize um, what appears on the sidebar. It doesn't appear that you can customize the order, but if I click on this add application button down below, then any applications that are on the device um, can either be selected on or off to appear on this list. So what I've done is I've only selected those applications that have uh, that came with the device. I'm excluding um, the Google Play Store, although that did come pre-installed. You just needed to log in to that. And any apps that I downloaded, I also deselected. So we'll go from top to bottom because that basically construes um, almost all the applications that are native to the device. Uh, if your list is longer than uh, what can be displayed, you have a down arrow which basically displays you know, this, the second page of the list and you can go back up accordingly. Uh, no swipe gestures, you have to click on the arrow to navigate. Okay, taking it from the top, you have their note-taking app, which we'll click on here. And we'll go ahead and start a new note. Um, this is basically showing how the notes are organized. So it starts in the most recent note that you've uh, written. Uh, you can then view a folder view. So you notice that the folder button became available when I selected this icon right there. Um, in, uh, and then you have a trash view for any files that you've deleted. You can see those and um, I don't have any. You have the option to select multiple notes at one time. Um, if you do that, we'll go ahead and check one for an example. You can either move it. For example, if you have folders, we don't in this case. You can export it or delete it. Let's take a look at those export options. So we'll click export. Uh, one, one file has been exported. Let's take a look at that. And it's exported as a PDF file. Okay. Let's go back to notes. There we go. Okay. Uh, you do have search functionality. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, see if it finds my notes file. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely looking for headers. Don't believe it's searching for handwriting. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna do a new note and we'll just do this in portrait. I'll do some handwriting here. Um, and then we'll also enter a text box. 
and um, like so. We'll see if search can pick up either of those. There we go. Search for hello. No. And then we'll see if it can pick up the text. No. Okay, so it's only looking at titles. All right, let's go into the notes app itself and we'll see the features that are available. All the features are here on this status bar. Um, save will get you out of the note. This is basically looking at the number of pages in the note. So if I click on this arrow, it'll add a page. And if I click on the number, you can see a, a grid of the pages and then you can quickly go to those by tapping on uh, the page. Uh, you can also add a page. So you can either click this arrow or add a page, a little redundant there. Do you have different pen types? Uh, three of them. You've got what looks like a ballpoint pen, a pencil, and a brush. They all have five levels of thickness and uh, five different grayscale colors to choose from. We saw an example of the text box. Let's go ahead and take a look at what shapes are available. Okay, four shapes. Let's do a little triangle. There you go. Okay, so clicking on these circles can extend. Let's take a look at our uh, app settings. Because Okay, we're in HD mode. I'm going to switch over to normal mode because we might get better performance that way. Okay, a little more responsive. Again, we'll take a look at a uh, downloaded app to see the difference between those modes. You can insert a photo and it's going to look, uh, it's actually got, these are all images that are available um, on the device, except for this one, which is a screenshot that I took earlier. So those can all be inserted. Heck, why don't we just go ahead and insert one of those? And there you go. And if I change my mind, actually let's click this plus, see what that does. Yeah, and so on. Okay, we've got a lasso tool here. So finger touch uh, for a long time, we'll paste it. And then if I there you go, um, and then the squares can make it smaller or larger accordingly. I can rename the file, share. Let's take a look at those options. So not many. Um, them by email, Bluetooth, or what they're calling quick share. There we go. Uh, we, ha we should export earlier. Have an eraser function. So it can be track, range, which is what I've been doing, um, or you can erase the entire layer like so. You have an undo and redo function uh, templates. Let's take a look at those. So not very many templates on um, on the device and they're hard to see because the images are quite faded but there are a total of 10 templates available on the device although you can import templates um, but I haven't imported any but they would go here uh, I'll have to test this but it'll probably be PDFs um, that, that can load into here okay can delete the page um, this horizontal will move the entire bar so instead of being on the left it can be on top we'll go ahead and do that um, and as a result of that not everything fits and so you end up with this more tab and that gives you the remaining option so you do have a little bit of customization you can't do the right side or the bottom but you can do the top or the left let's go ahead and go back Like so, and then there is this refresh button.
And that's basically all the features in notes. Okay, keeping uh, going down the list here, we're going to the library. Any type of documents um, are listed here. Uh, you can see you can sort it by either recent documents or by the folder structure. And this is the default folder structure that the device comes with, so it's by language. Um, and again, you have your, your similar kind of uh, functions here. Let's go ahead and click on that, where we can either move or delete files. Uh, search functionality, which again, I would presume would be on the titles. And you can change the, uh, the sort options or the view options. So we'll go to a list option, and it looks like that. Let's go ahead and go into the English folder. So here are some documents. Actually, I think if we go back to the grid, we can see the type of documents. Yeah, so we've got a couple of EPUBs in here, uh, some PDFs. The, the covers are showing on these because I selected them. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this PDF. Okay, we're in here. We do have some uh, annotation ability here. So you can see we've got a pen, different pen styles, and these can all be customized. So if I click on the item, uh, I can have a pen, a brush, a ball pen, or even a highlighter. Those are the color options, and there's varying line widths up to um, five. So let's go ahead and just uh, play with that a little bit. Okay, and I can tap over here to advance the page. If I tap on the middle, uh, you can see the navigation. So you've got your table of contents over here. There's none listed currently. If you have any bookmarks or highlights or handwritten notes, just like the one that we started with. You can also show all the pages in a grid and you can change how many fit on a grid. So we can go three by three here, like so, and advance to the end of the book. Okay, we'll get out of that. Here's the progress bar. You can play around with the, the fonts. So those that are familiar with readers functions, there's a lot of different ways to kind of make it fit differently on the screen. And also how the text flows um, can be uh, toggled as well, including you know the font size, how much space between lines, etc. You can do split screen. So three options here. Uh, split screen for the single document on both screens. Let's go ahead and do that just for fun. Okay, like that. So they're, they're now operating independently of each other. All right, so exiting one document gets you out a uh, split screen. Let's take a look at those other options. So we can also have um, two different documents and then a uh, document and notes. Then your refresh settings can be selected here. And uh, they add here the HD256, which functions very similar to HD, normal and extreme, and your refresh rate, meaning how often will the screen refresh if we get that down to uh, one. So every time I flip the screen, it should refresh. There we go. Yeah, like so. You notice up above, um, there is a search feature. Let's take a look at that. We'll look for the word wild. And it found it. Okay, we can also go to each instance. Go ahead and get out of that. Uh, we can toggle touch controls. 
I should point out that these buttons down below work um, in the native reader. So if I click on the advanced page, we advance and I can go back as well. These buttons won't work, however, uh, if you're using an app like Kobo or Kindle, any other app, these, these buttons basically become ineffective, but in their native readers, um, it absolutely works. This is basically going to get, so if I got rid of the pen tray, like so, oops, there we go. I wanted it back, I would click on that, and it returns. And this is also a shortcut to the eraser function. Like so. Refreshing the page. Uh, you can bookmark here, and then we can go into settings. And just a couple items. We see we have pinched to zoom. Let's take a look at what that looks like. But it doesn't, oh, there we go. Okay, got it. And we're already at the base level. Okay, so those are all the general features within the reader. And this is looking at a PDF. Let's go ahead and back out of that. Uh, you can see now that we've selected that document. That's why the cover shows. So all these will fill in once we go into the document. Let's go into an EPUB. And you know, same same functionality. We're in the same same reader, and we've pretty much gone over all of those elements. So let's keep going. We have applications, and these are all the applications on the device or have been downloaded. Uh, most of these I have downloaded, like Kindle or Kobo, CPUZ or Libby, Google Play Books, which is this one right here. Uh, those were all downloaded, but the rest are are applications that are native to the device. If you go into files, this is where you can go into your file structure. So there's a couple options. You have uh, these items, which are basically aggregations. So if I click on this, all the pictures on the device should be available. There we go. Okay. However, if you click on this top section, we should be able to go into the file structure and and here we are um, if you created a template uh, and you wanted to drag it onto the device you would drag it onto this note template file so that's where you put like your pdf and then um, and then that would be available to you on that import tab that we saw earlier so there you go okay there's a little tasks application it's a pretty simple application you can create a new task You can either type in oops. and then you can indicate um, it's got a little bit of, let's see what the pen options are. Yeah, so same as with notes. And you can indicate when you're done. And then delete the task, but we'll go ahead and just leave it. And it'll appear in our done folder. So a simple little to-do app. Then there's a reader, and this is different than what we saw earlier. So there's actually two ways to read documents. Um, and this is the second of them. Let's go ahead and get out of this. Okay, so now you're basically in the pocketbook store and there are a number of um, items on there. And also you'll notice that my Google Books are listed here. Uh, we have Alice in Wonderland and EPUB. This was on this document. So let's go ahead and go back in. Just wanted to show that. And the feature set is a little bit different than what we saw in the previous reader. So let's take a look at that. So you've got your table of contents up here. 
on top. So here they are. Let's see if we can get those smaller. Not here, we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, you can also see if there's any bookmarks or notes, actually, here's the bookmarks right there. Let's go back. Okay, you can search on the document, but most of your functionality is down below. So this is your progress bar here. So if I click on this, it'll advance accordingly. I can change the font here. Okay. So a number of features, you can, uh, you can change the, the specific font here, you can change the size next, the line spacing, and then the margins and the uh, justification, um, in addition to a couple other toggles around hyphenations and ignoring the document style. I find that trying to change the size of the text is best done in the default. So I can move that up. down so it, oh, let's, get, let's get it up there so it's legible okay it's not terrible and then if you wanted to change let's see if it's done okay and then you can change the font and it'll adjust accordingly I find if you go the other way around if you change fonts it's much harder actually to manipulate the size well in this case it worked just fine So a little bit different there. Let's keep going. We've got some more functionality. So we can either go with, um, what's called night light. So that actually made it a little bit, the text was a little bit lighter. You can have a reading progress indicator which is up there, um, and you can change the mode. This is one page, we can go to two pages, in theory. No, maybe not in this book, okay. Uh, you have rotation, uh, TTS, again, that would have to be over Bluetooth. You can add a note, you can go full screen. Let's go ahead and click on the settings. Okay, so you have some more formatting settings here. Um, okay, there's your page settings, fonts, translations, They're, what they're calling the context menu. I'm not too sure about what this is all about. Go to other. Oh, some integration with Android TV. That's interesting. Got some more options down below. So actually quite a bit here. Let's take a look at this. Okay, fast navigation, whatever that means. We'll take a look at metadata. Okay. And organize, last but not least. Um, again, pretty much just took those menu items and put them on top. So again, the device has these two readers. This is the pocketbook reader, and then the previous reader that we saw was uh, in the library. They have a browser. Let's click on that. It's a pretty straightforward browser. It's, let's go to pocketbook, see what we find there. Okay, and you can choose a different site. We won't go into that. This is pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and uh, if you can import music onto the device um, and they have some that are on there already.
So we're playing one now, but obviously you're not hearing it because there are no speakers. All right, let's go home and round it out. So again, gallery, another way to look at the images on the device. I don't remember taking a picture of that. Let's see if we can go ahead and long press and I can delete the file. I see one of them is a set standby, so why don't we go ahead and do that. Let's long press this. All right, let's take a look. If I go into sleep mode, that's what I expect to see. There it is. Lovely. Charles Bridge, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from Prague. All right. So that is basically a tour of um, how this device generally works, the functionality that's there and the options that are there. Let's do refresh settings now. So let's go into an app. We'll go into Kobo. Let load. Okay, fantastic. So we've got some, we've got some covers here. This is great. Let's take a look at how those covers change as we switch between the different modes. So currently we're in normal mode. So either fix your eyes on this cover over here or this cover over here as I change it to HD. Okay, so they got a little bit darker. Let's change it back to normal. Okay, a little lighter. Let's go to extreme. Okay, not that different from normal. But definitely darker with HD, a little bit more detail. So if we go ahead and go into one of these books. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and swipe down. And let's play with the DPI. So currently we're at the lowest level. Let's go ahead and take that all the way to the top. And I see we've crashed the out. Here we go. It's re reloading. Very good. You can see that's already much larger, that text. So it's comical at this point, but you can see how much influence that DPI setting can have. Let's go ahead and set that back down to a more reasonable level. Perhaps say here. We'll get out of the app. You can see we have bigger icons than we had before, like so. Let's go ahead and play with that contrast setting and see how that changes. Whoops. Okay, we're currently on the lowest level. Let's go ahead and go all the way to the top. Very dark. Go about the middle. Okay, much lighter. Okay. All right, now let's look at the performance. So go back into this novel. And uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll uh, turn down that DPI there. load, go into the novel. Okay, so we're on HD. Okay, we'll see how quickly it does page turns. Remember, we can't use the buttons, so we'll be tapping the screen to advance the page. So I'm counting about two seconds. So 1001, 1002, 1001, 1002, okay, roughly two seconds for a page turn. And let's go ahead then and go into normal mode, like so. Okay, 1001, 1000. Normally we have to wait a second as it changes chapters. Fine, let's try this again. 1001, 1000, 1001, 1001, 1000. So a little over a second. 1001, 1000. Okay, or maybe this little second to a little over a second. Let's see what we get when we get extreme mode. Okay. 
All right. 1001, 1001, 1001. Let it go to, through a chapter. 1001. Okay, so maybe a second or just under a second. So the extreme mode is just a hair faster than normal mode. But normal mode is about half or twice as fast, I guess you could say, um, as HD mode and turning pages anyway. So that's basically how uh, those app optimization settings affect the device. We'll go home. Okay, so that ends it for this device. In the next video, we're going to look at a little closer at the global handwriting function, see how that performs. We'll have to download uh, OneNote uh, to show that in action. We'll look at a Bluetooth keyboard, see how that performs. We'll do the battery test and see how this device uh, fares and compares to other devices using the same testing methodology. Um, and then the final video will then be a formal review of the pros and cons of this device. Hopefully this was a good overview of what the device is capable of and you have a sense of the functionality. All right, any questions, please put them in the comments. Until then, I'll see you next time.